that I choose the Lord today. Oh, please, run and run away. That I choose the Lord. Okay, wrong words, but I'm as close as I can. Hey, y'all, uh, I want to talk about uh, the many sagas of uh, John Gray. Um, because um, I know it was last week, for those of you who are watching this in this year, and I know that um, talking about the indiscretions of preachers can be a very shaky situation because um, these are men and women that you know, know and love and um, I tell you, um, you know, if I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to take you to a place where we need to go. Where is that? The truth. Uh oh. Everybody, so on. There's a oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who put that over there? See, I gotta start letting these kids mess with my stuff. It don't make no sense. Hello, everybody. So on, so on the Jones show. Better. I'm here. It is a midday connection, baby. How y'all is? Come on in. Water's fine, water's fine, good to see you, Sherry Lynn, oh my God, that man stay in scandal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Good afternoon to you, Deatrice and Amber, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, and a uh, whole bunch of y'all here. Good, at good afternoon to you, K to the H, uh, hello, Eleanor. Listen, got a, got a lot here to talk about. Uh, the, this, the indiscretions of our dear brother, John Gray. Ramsey, good to see you. Uh, and Brenda, blessings to you, Baker. Uh, I want to talk about this in a way that only I know how to be fair and balanced, unlike Fox News. <laughs> Ain't that their motto? Fair and balanced. I think they had to get rid of that because it just wasn't working out for them. Um, first of all, I'd like to make uh, some, you know, house rules here. When I when I when I do these shows, when I talk about people what I what I usually do not do that is Sally Wilburn is talk about people's and how they might get caught in some kind of indiscretion or some kind of sin or some kind of scandal I usually don't like doing that I don't because I had scandals I've had sins I'm sure I still do sin we all probably sin and don't sometimes we don't know what we did that day so that's why we kill our flesh every day we go to the lord every day we pray men should always be praying because we don't know what we've said or done that could have been a trespass and a trespass is a sin all right uh, you might if i look at a woman and not touch her but i look at a woman on the street in a sexual way i have sin it's just just the way it's just the way it is all right so every day hopefully before you go to bed at night if you're not thinking about god all throughout the day you should be praying then you know god mm, boy 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 i gotta i gotta fix this i'm saying it this way because a lot of times what we do is we look at the the allowance of grace and say you know what grace is always always there for me so <laughs> i'll do what i do and then i'm good <laughs> you know and i see in uh the sins of these men that sometimes we see that done in public when i messed up and i stole some equipment or what have you when i stood before the judge i was not going to say the woman did this, and then I stole her stuff. I wasn't going to say the church beguiled me. I wasn't going to say that this happened, so I did this. No, I stood before the judge and says, I am guilty, period. Well, surely you had someone else to help you. I says, no, I did that myself. I want to get to this, this over with. Give me my punishment so that I can live through it. God can take me through it. And then I can come out as pure gold. My lawyer talk, tried to talk me out of that. Tried to say, now nah, nah, here's what we need to do. No, you understand? See, you all, you all are of the world. This is what y'all do, all right? You try to get people off and things like that. No, don't get me off. 
because like uh, Joseph said, when uh, Potiphar's wife uh, tried to have sex with him, he says, I can't do this. It ain't about you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really ain't about you. I want to clear my conscience. You don't belong to me. You are somebody else's uh, wife. I can't. I just can't. You know, so I says to the lawyer, I can't do this. I want to clear my conscience. I don't want to live through life knowing that you got me off because I done lied to the judge. And I'm walking away and thinking I got away. I didn't get away because it's going to set with me. A good man, it sets with good men. You understand? To the peer, all things appear. So tell the truth and then the people will forgive you. So look at this. This is out of Genesis chapter uh, 3. It's a familiar passage. Uh, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. They both hid. Then the Lord God called to the man. Where are you? Notice who he's calling to first. I wonder why he called out Adam first. Where you at? Now you're going to see in this story how fair God is. Because he gives them all a chance. He said, where are you? And he, and he replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid. I was afraid because... I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? Boy. And the Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? Did you do that? Mm -hmm. Then the man replied, it was the woman you gave me. Pause. This is usually the response when someone got busted. A public scandal. They start saying, well, yeah, I did it. But someone else was involved. Someone else spoken to my ear. Someone that, y'all, the church gave me this building. And so I had to do what I had to do because you should have known it was too much for me. That's what uh, this man is saying here. He says, the man says it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and then I ate it. Now watch what God says. God is a fair God. He says, okay, okay, okay. I'm going I'm to let you, I'm going to let you get away with that. All right. Let's go with that one. All right. I can see God doing this. Let's go with that one. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with that one. All right. And then here's what happened next. Uh, then it says, then the Lord God asked the woman. He won't let her get away with it. All right. Let me ask. Let me. Okay. I, Adam, sit right there, there. I'll be back. Hey, Eve, who, uh, what have you done? And then she said, the serpent deceived me. She replied. That's why. Okay. 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 Then the Lord God says, okay, sit down, Eve, sit down. I'll get to you in a minute. Hey, serpent. <laughs> Fair God. He said, because, now listen, when he got to the serpent, he didn't ask the serpent. No questions. I wonder why. Why didn't he ask the serpent? But he asked Adam and he asked Eve. Come on, church. When y'all blaming the world for stuff, God is asking you questions. But when he get to the world, he says, I'll take care of the world. I ain't asking the world nothing. I know why they did it. Why did you do it? You of mine. Understand? So as it pertains to the serpent, he didn't ask, serpent, why did you do this? Because serpent, who the serpent going to blame? So the, uh, God says when he talked to the serpent, he says, because you have done this, you are cursed. More than all animals, domestic and wild, you will crawl on your belly, groan in the du on dust, blah, 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 blah. Okay? You know the story, right? Okay? Now, uh, as you go further down, then he says, and to the man, he said, after he got through talking to the serpent. <laughs> All right, wait. After he talked talk, talk to the serpent, he's, then he went to the woman, he says, so he backed it up. He went in reverse order. He says, then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will 
desire to control your husband and you will desire to control your husband but he will rule over you oh. did y'all miss this in bible study did y'all miss this in sunday school do y'all understand now why brothers say it would be best for me to dwell on the rooftop than dwell in the house of a contentious woman huh it will be the it's going to be the desire of women to control their men <laughs> still to this day and he says now and to the man he said since you listen to your wife pause <laughs> adam said this woman you gave me begot me adam was like i got away with that whoa i got away with that because now god is talking to adam uh, to eve mm. And Adam was sitting in the, in the cup looking like how God is getting ready to, it was punishing those two, those two people, uh, Eve and the serpent. And then God says, and to you, Adam, he's like, whoa, <laughs> wait, back to me? I thought I got away with it. No, he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. Oh, did you see that in the scriptures? He said, the ground is cursed, not because of the woman. The ground is cursed, not because of the serpent. I'm cursing the ground because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it. Mm, 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 mm. And I said, circle back and got him. <laughs> oh, man, it's something else. Yeah, that's another reason why all shouldn't be. Come on, come on, Pitts, come on. Yeah, he said, it will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grain by the sweat of your face. You will have you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made, for you were made from dust. Dust you shall return. Now, let's talk about the brothers who are pastors, who are teachers, who continue to do this, especially publicly. Okay? It says here in James chapter 3, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers. Everybody want to be an apostle. Everybody wants to be, you should be wanting to be bishops, but you don't want to be bishops anymore. You want to be apostles and prophets, and then you don't want to just be apostles and prophets. You want to be chief apostles and master prophets. Okay? It says here, many of you should, uh, of you, should become te not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more strictly mm. more strictly he says indeed we all make many mistakes all of us make mistakes i make mistakes y'all make mistakes all right he said but don't jump in the uh, don't fill out a resume and say you're a teacher and then jump in that uh, that industry don't do it he said don't do it it's too it's too tough you mess up the whole world is looking, he says, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. All right. Don't be a teacher. Mm -mm. He says, don't do it. I suggest you not do it. It's not good for you. As it pertains to Jay, uh, uh, Pastor John Gray. I had a discussion with the young lady and we were discussing about his indiscretions and things like that. And we found a pattern. We found we, we found the pattern. All right. Now, I'm going to play a portion of his video just a little bit. And I want to break down our, my conversation. All right. Uh, with this woman, my conversation with them, because I want you all to see, brothers, that sisters are not as dumb as y'all think they are. John Gray's wife is not as dumb as y'all think she is. Okay. Hillary Clinton said something very interesting about when he sinned. She says, I'm not going to be Tammy Wynette and stand by your man and all these things. She was, she was, she was saying something. Okay. So when I talk to some of these ladies, I noticed uh, something about their cleverness, their brilliance, their intuition. That God has put into the, into them, and brothers, when you think that you got away with it, you didn't. You didn't. 
And in not so much your wife or your girlfriend or your fiance or your significant others, but other women are looking from the outside and they they reading you like a book. And that's why some of them can get in because they can see that your wife, you and your wife ain't 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 ain't, 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 ain't happening. OK, <clears throat> you you're not happy at home. You not you don't have to say it over the pulpit. No, you're not happy at home. All right. But the women in the audience, in the congregation or on your job, whatever, they could tell that there's a missing link. There's a hole in the bucket, Deliza. There's a hole and they uh, will can feel it. They'll try. And out of the five that may be trying, one or two will get in. They Women are cunning, sharp. <laughs> OK. All right. So, brothers, don't think that you top of the game. Because when you think you're top of the game, the woman is one game higher than you. She's always one level ahead of you because she's studying you. She's calculated. I ain't crazy. <laughs> James, don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Bless it to you, Charlie Milan. All right. So what I wanted to do here and is take this lesson to another level because many of y'all are giving John Gray a green light. At least he came forward and he's, he's the struggling man. You know, men, men struggle and uh, on and on. I've seen y'all's lives. Y'all went live. I sent your Facebook posts about this man and, you know, and on and on. But notice what the men are saying opposed to what the women are saying. Mm-hmm. Notice when I came on here, notice the first thing that Sherry Lynn said. She says, oh, my God, that man stay in scandal after scandal. Sherry Lynn represents many of the women out there who may not say this publicly, but they're saying, dude, dude, come on, man. Come on, dude, come on. The men are coming to the defense and saying, you know, all have sinned. <laughs> And coming fall short of the glory of God. And this maybe sometimes you need to fall to a just man falls seven times. All right. The women are like, nah, bruh. I know what your problem is. So I'm gonna read this conversation that I was having with this young lady, because the women, oh, they on to us, brothers. <laughs> they on to us. Terry Harmon, bless it to you. Good afternoon. Says, That's all right. Did not get the notification. Denise James, fix that notification. But you're here. You're right on time. I struggled mine right out the door. <laughs> Sally, <laughs> come on, come on. He's a mess. He's still blaming Jezebel and Delilah. See, see, see. What I tell you? Saunders. Trying to tell y'all. That's a representation of the women folk. <laughs> they know. They know. Again, they may not just say it openly. All right. Look at look at the scandals that happened down through the years. Now I have a list. I have a list here of uh, it's too bright. You couldn't see it of men who have done things or it was said that they did some things. And but you look at either politically where America is, depending on where they who they defended or religiously depended on where they stood or racially it depending on where how they defended a person's indiscretion. For instance, O.J. Simpson, we believe in our heart of hearts that he did something. <laughs> he did something. He may not have held the knife that killed these people, but maybe he he hired. All right, his hand was in it. The average African American believes this. But they could not come forward and say openly they couldn't because they needed O.J. To win. They needed OJ to win this fight. They needed him to go free. They needed it. The whites needed him uh, to go to jail. They needed him to get the death penalty. They needed it. Why? Because of what color he was and the color of his wife and that young man. You understand? If OJ had did this to another black person, it would not have had that racial divide. You best believe me what I'm saying. Y'all better listen to me. Men have given up who civilizations based on privates. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, whole is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that's what you meant. 
But you're right. You're right. Ooh, you're right. Uh huh. Okay. That's OJ. Look at Bill Clinton. Now, OJ was a black and white thing. Bill Clinton, kind of black and white, but it was more Democratic versus Republic, Republican. Okay. He did what he did. He hid it. He says, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I mean, he was, boy, even at the hearing, he was like, he was drinking coke. <laughs> Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. and do it. And then, it, then the chips were too much against, against him. And we believed him, although some says he did that thing. All right. And then he came forth and says, maybe I did have a sexual relationship with him. Okay. And then, and then y'all forgave him, like that. Why? We needed Bill Clinton. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little early, Joyce, because I just need to get this in because I, I, I got a busy night. <laughs> Good to see you, by the way. Yeah, we we needed him. Understand? And so the, so America forgave Bill Clinton. Look at look at Martin Luther King. Remember when the movie came out? What was the name of that movie? Uh, one day when the glory come. Okay, a couple years ago, and um, there was an episode where he was uh, his wife. Was on the phone with him. Was it on the phone? Or was he there? And uh, she says. I think they were on the phone. And she found out that he was cheating. You know the FBI had. Uh, had, uh, had the little thing in the room. And all that stuff. And then she says. I know your voice. <laughs> okay. It was clever what they did in the movie. But basically. Yes yeah, Selma. Thank you. But basically in the movie. Pretty much. He did it. All right. And we could not, we could not stomach that Martin Luther King cheated on his wife. America couldn't, we can't, it's fairly African Americans. No, he, no, no, we would not now, Jesse Jackson, that's a different story. But Martin Luther King, no, we can't because he's a giant. He's someone we love and trust and he's done so much for us that we can't stomach that so the movie wrote in that little piece to bring in some truth but they did it in such a clever way that it made it, it more palatable did y'all see what they did in Selma I thought it was a brilliant move I met OJ and after meeting him he convinced me he could never have done what he was accused of doing no way that's Avis <laughs> that's Avis uh and I can speak to it, it, all the Avis words here, I can speak to that because I know people who was very convincing to me that they didn't do it until I found the receipts. So I want to go here. Avis, I'm glad you put that there. I'm not saying he did or didn't, but I'm telling you how brilliant. As I talk about our, uh, I'm going to read from the transcript of our, my conversation with this young lady. I'll talk about how brilliant John Gray was. In his rebuttals. Uh-huh. Yeah. What about Eddie Long? <clears throat> what about Eddie Long? Okay. Now, we just assume that he was a closeted homosexual. <clears throat> I didn't assume it. To this day, I don't know. But many of you said he's gay. All right. Atlanta, George, number one. <laughs> Okay, these young men coming forth, all right, all these things, okay, and then settling the cases and stuff like that, all right, uh, all this stuff is like guilty, 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 guilty. You know what? I did a show called the the Crucifixion of of uh, Eddie Long, and I got, I mean, oh man, the people just they were confused, and I had to come in a way that was different than the way others were coming, or could they? The man had died, and then right away, people were like, yeah, see, God killed him. <laughs> Yeah, so you had two sides on Eddie, Eddie Long. Most of most of the people actually put him in hell. You understand? They put him in hell. Uh, Jim Baker, they put him in hell. Why? Many many times, many reasons. The most reasons because of the magnitude. Of the case. Jim Baker. Jimmy Swagger. Came forth. Matter of fact. I got something for Jimmy Swagger. Let me see here. Hold on. In America. A leading television.
arrived with his wife and family. The sermon was hardly typical. The preacher had come to make a public confession about a sexual encounter with a prostitute. The evangelist was tearfully contrite. To my Lord and my Savior, my Redeemer, the one whom I serve and I love and I worship, I have sinned against you, my Lord. He asked forgiveness from the congregation and especially from his wife, Frances. I have sinned against you, and I beg your forgiveness. This nation is a nation under God, of God and... These are hard times for television evangelism, still shaken by an earlier scandal involving Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Ironically, it was Mr. Swaggart whose charges of adultery helped bring down another television evangelist, Jim Baker. Mr. Baker was forced to resign last year as head of a hugely successful South Carolina ministry and holiday complex called PTL, or Praise the Lord. Mr. Baker said he'd been wickedly manipulated into a sexual encounter with a church secretary. The secretary said the preacher had insisted on it. Jimmy Swaggart said he won't be doing any more preaching until church officials have decided what disciplinary action they're going to take. He could be reprimanded or even stripped of his authority as a minister. But yesterday, church members said they've already forgiven him. I, I think we're all human and God loves him and he loves us all and we should stand behind him. What we saw in there was uh, something that took a man to do. And uh, so we're proud of him. Yes, and that's okay. You know, he came forth and, and they were proud of him. That, But you understand, these men kept doing it because... Jimmy, Qu uh, Jimmy Crack, <laughs> Jimmy Swaggart says, forgive me, God, I have sinned against you. And then later on, he went looking for another prostitute and said, forgive me again. Jim Baker, same thing. Forgive me my, my bad. And then, I mean, it was really bad. Okay. Uh, Jamal Bryant. Mm, do I have Jamal Bryant? I forgot to pull in Jamal Bryant, all right? But he confessed to his many. In uh, matter of fact, there's a video on YouTube. You type in Pastor Jamal Bryant on past infidelities, the scars, and rising above. All right, is the name of the of the video. I meant to put it in the queue here, and and it, she asked him a question: How do you think you're going to be qualified for this new gig? Whose gig? Eddie Long gig. And he's like, Hey. You had to you had to serve, man. You know what? You had to um, in order for you to. Uh, I want to. Can I do it? Can I download it here? In order, f he says, in order for you to be perfect for the job, you have had to have these ins indiscretions. Is pretty much. He says, who would better fit the position than a person who's messed up like this? I was like, wow, wow, yeah. Uh, this is why uh, we must not place pastors on the pedestal. No one is perfect, so we must not be surprised when pastors have faults. The problem is when pastors portray as they, yes, that's my thing, Donald Trent. That's what I'm trying to say here. I personally like John Gray. He spoke a powerful word. Everyone had a great time. However, all of us from the church understood that he was a comedian with a wonderful voice to sing with a heart. None of us saw the anointing to be a Oh, wow. James Foster. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that at the end of what he said there? He said, none of us saw the anointing to be a pastor. Ugh. Ooh, that cut, brother. That cut, that cut to the marrow and that bone cancer in the body. BW says, yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Um... That's uh, and then look at uh, recently Jerry Falwell, Jerry Falwell Jr. All right, taking a picture, uh, putting up a tweet or something like that with him, his pants, his belly out with this with the woman next to him, and the, you know, I mean, it was bad. And then come to find out, he and his wife was covering up a what's the word that uh, that Will Smith's wife used in entanglement. <laughs> It was covering up an entanglement, and he lost his job because of that. Okay, 
So the white evangelical says, leave him alone. He's doing a good job. He's the president of the blah, blah. His father was blah, 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 blah. We on this side like, nah, set him down. No, nah, he deserved to lose his job. So why do we forgive people and restore them? Because this, did not the Bible says to do this? No matter the sin? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, this is a tough one. Uh, we all battle something. Ours just hasn't been exposed. Come on down, Trent. Come on. I'm trying. I'm trying to tell y'all. I always tell y'all. I tell y'all all the time. Tell your own story. Stop letting other people tell your story. Tell your story so that people won't tell it wrong. Because people going to tell your story and tell it wrong. If you've been watching my show, at least for over the past year, I I told my story over and over again, the things that I did, because I know what I did, and let me tell it. So now, when other people try to tell my story, y'all hear them trying to tell my story, and you'll be like, no, that's not the story. Brother Jones not only told us the story, he showed us the receipts, <laughs> okay? What's receipts you got? Oh no, that ain't. That's the wrong receipt. Mm. Oh no, that that receipt is outdated. That, no, that's forged. No, no. Tell your story and tell it early. Don't tell your story after the world told your story because then it look. Then you're in, you're embellishing. Mm -hmm. Tell on your own self. You understand what I'm saying? Because if she tell it, brothers, the world is going to believe her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once she tell it, ask me how I know they will believe her and not just believe that this happened, but, but believe every detail of what happened in y'all's, y'all's romper room. Understand? So whatever you do, you come before the church and say, but I didn't, that did, but that, that, that. they're going to like, yeah, whatever, whatever. We believe her. You took too long to tell your story. If this man, uh, Bill Clinton, had come to America and says, I did sin. I did have sex or whatever it was with this Monica Lewinsky. If he had come forth right away, America would have forgiven him right away because they liked him. They liked him. But because he kept covering up, covering up. Then he almost lost his job because he lied under oath and perjury is the one of the worst uh, crimes you can do outside in politics, outside of uh, treason, <laughs> treason, <laughs> perjury never turns out OK for you. Mm hmm. Uh, I really don't understand the need to take pics in in the videos of their transgressions. No, for sure. It will get out. Yeah. Well, people do that because of. Uh, because of the, the the lustful desires that we have, um, not just men but women like to take videos of of uh, sex and what have you. Because there's something in us that do that and thinking that, you know, it'll never get out. So that's that's just a human that's a human frailty that we all not no not we all sorry <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Get in front of the story before you're overtaken by the storm. That's good, George. That's good. That's good. If you see your brother or sister has been overtaken by a fault of you, come on, you better drop them scriptures, Avis. That's it right there. Uh, you with your spiritual restored. That's it. Tommy finished it. Come on. All right. So let's talk about this. Uh, this this great thing, because I, I'm going to read some of my conversations I had. Matter of fact, let me play portions of his video here. But I want to take a moment today to give a a bit of context and clarity around the message that you're about to receive. Over the past days, there have been any number of stories in blogs and social media about me. And I believe that the body of Christ and those who are leaders are to be held to a higher standard according to scripture. And a part of today's message speaks to those places that have been swirling. I wanna make it clear that though my conversational and emotional breaches are wrong, this was not physical or sexual. I've only ever been with one woman that is my wife, but the areas where I have missed the mark do not absolve me of responsibility. But I wanted to give you context and clarity so that you can receive this message 
the way God intends for it to be received. It is my prayer that God would allow your heart to be open, and your spiritual ears to be attentive to what he's saying to the church. Let my life be an example to you of how God wants integrity and holiness to be the calling cards of his leaders. To my wife, I love you. I honor you today for loving me, for walking with me, not only in therapy, but for the insight that you've given me to begin to do the work as we have been doing for some time now, but to continue in that process. Thank you, Aventure. I love and honor you, and I thank God for you and our children. And to the Relentless Church, may the very best days of our church be in front of us, because they are certainly not behind us. God bless you. Now let's go to church. All right, he said, God bless you. Now let's go to church. <clears throat> I guess as long as I got that out of the way. Whew. And the music played in the background. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? You can't do what you see anointed people do just because you have talent. Or want, mm, mm, mm. Jane Foster, you know, boy, I tell you, boy, you. Eh, Lord have mercy. You're preaching this thing today. Okay, so here's this conversation that I had. All right. This is the many sagas of John Gray. And I'm going to show you the brilliance of this man and how many of you said pretty much many of you fell for it his problem is that he is not being true to himself man just tell the truth come on Donald, Donald you're in my notes Donald Trent you're in my notes man stop <laughs> why are you cheating on my paper alright All right. here's the conversation I had first of all let me make it clear that John Gray was speaking to church appropriators and not the true body of Christ alright this was this young lady she says, clever. <laughs> I'll tell you, Lord, the ladies, boy, y'all can't, y'all can't pull nothing over the ladies, all right? This was a masterpiece of Phil Lin, uh, a, a Philharmonic extravaganza, one in which he actually blamed on God. He blamed on God. Notice what I read, I read earlier in here uh, uh, in the Bible about Adam, right? He blamed two people. He directly blamed Eve, but indirectly blamed God. He says, this woman that you gave me, you understand? She tricked me. Now you know good and well I'm weak. All right, so John Gray blamed God. He says, here's what he says. I told you God that I wasn't ready. I told you God that I was a mess. Why did you call me? Why did you raise me up when you knew that I would fail and my humanity would sour? That's what he said. I didn't play the rest of it, but you go to YouTube and that's what he said. So we, well, so what we started doing, we started picking out his words from his own mouth. These are his receipts. And I need you y'all to pay close attention to this conversation. All right. So what he's saying is he was going to get a hard on. And he needed to screw. I'm, I'm giving y'all verbatim what we, what we were talking about. This boy does not know what he just did. He sounds like a 15-year-old boy that's been caught in his bedroom masturbating and asking his parents, why was he given a penis? Why would you give me a penis? Knowing that I'm 12 years old. Why, God, would you allow me to go to sleep and let me do have a dream? And 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 let my let the let this spermatozoa fill up in my sacks. Why would you allow this magazine to be right here on my way to school? There's a there's this there's this little newspaper stand with all these magazines. Why would you let me do this? Number two, Gray using scripture. And his statement that God is going to come against all witchcraft to defend his name. That's in quote. Was a brilliant start because it did two things in setting the tone of his masterful ma manipulation. And that it was. It set up good, uh, uh, good against evil while simultaneously giving his sin the covering of witchcraft. And positioning him as a victim against its counterpart. 
of God's retribution. Always put, if you're going to build, if you're going to uh, put some soup together, put witchcraft in there. Mm hmm. Greg clearly understands that people, even the appropriators, feel the need for God's retribution because after all, it was just two years ago that we were in the same place with this man. In bringing up witchcraft, he doesn't have to take responsibility for his actions and he has positioned, him, positioned himself nicely as a victim. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, man. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on. What are you saying here? Any man who says his wife is raising him doesn't pass the marriage test. No, show, show don't. Show don't. Come on. All right. Shall I continue? He uses the excuse of being a virgin for so long. Now he is just out. Yep. Number three. He cleverly lowers himself to the position of unworthiness in his statement of. Here's what he said. And I quote. If God can use a donkey, he can use an unsubmitted man like me to get his work done. Mm. Brilliant. Within the moment and twinkling of his eye, he got off of the floor of unworthiness and leveled himself to worthy with just one statement. Worthy of his calling and worthy of his place above his constituents as their leader by using scripture to make it so. She says, I'm afraid of John Gray. I'm afraid of him. Number four, his master manipulation of the scriptures, his pride and arrogance in knowing that this well-written speech would prick the hearts of believers is absolutely abominable. His willingness to be the victim to speak from a victim's perspective clutches our hearts and our empathy and sympathy are ignited when he says, I always envied healthy marriages. We go along with him for the ride. However, we get slapped in the face by his fat hand of manipulation when he reaches back to disparage the church saying that he saw church, but not the living of the gospel. Mm. Another brilliant attempt at blaming the institution for his weakness. The fact that people could live how they wanted to live and still preach. Now these are his words. All right. Was that was fascinating to him. He has cleverly laid on the psychiatric couch of the church and giving us a cleverly laid out regression back to his childhood, exposing his need for behavior modification and doggone it. We're going to give it to him. <laughs> his retort of blaming the accuser, the accuser and stating we all have stuff. It's a classic deflection and bears itself out when he says, I just don't get to have an anonymous, an anonymous, an 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 <laughs> I never can say that word properly. <laughs> and an anatomy. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, pretty much it was referring to his sin. Anonymity. That's the word. <laughs> Anonymity. Okay. Number five. Now watch this. Somebody said the, the MJ effect. I'm not fake. I'm human. John Gray's theme throughout his whole soliloquy. I'm not fake. I'm human is I am not fake Christian. I am a human. I did not lie to you. All right. Regards to my double life. I am human. I am not a liar. I am human. I did not disrespect and violate my marriage, my marital laws and commit adultery against my wife. I am a man. I am human. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. This was an agonizing video to watch purely because uh, at the onset it's calculated and manipulated constructed and intended purpose was to discredit and absolve himself from his own actions and to plead with the body of Christ for absolution because he is human 
However, in doing so and constructing this defense, he has violated so many ordinances of God constructed around the commandments of God and the fruit of the spirit that it leaves a false or foul taste in my mouth. If this pastor would have taken a page out of the confession of Jimmy Swagger book of repentance and would have said, I have sinned and allowed myself to get caught up in sexual sin. Please pray for me and my family as I take a sabbatical. He would have all respect in the world. But the arrogance in which he postured himself shone brighter than that contrition evidenced in him rearing back in his chair and stating with pride that he is the realest thing that the church has ever seen. I think I threw up a little in my mouth. (laughs) What she said. (laughs) Okay. I'm the realest thing the church has seen. Do y'all get it? Y'all see what's happening here? Hmm. Number six, last one. His professed enslavement and bondage to sin is complicated and problematic. It holds no scriptural truth for born again believers. There is no scripture in here. None whatsoever that can back this up. Some of y'all trying to get out of your marriages because somebody's breath stink or somebody come home late from work or, or, or you don't like them anymore because they're too controlling, okay? Or they have a mental illness. Nothing in the scriptures free you from that marriage. Now, hey, you may be able to leave the house and separate, all right? But there's nothing in the scriptures that free you because we've been trying to find loopholes in the Bible for your situation. You never even prayed for that woman. You never prayed for that husband. Never prayed to ask God, is this the one? You just got horny and you said, we got to do this because I I just can't do nothing. And you went to the book where it says it's better to marry than to burn with passion and you got married. And now you're in this thing and now you want us to pray uh, for an answer on how to get out of this and you want me to go into scripture to find loopholes. People be calling me for loopholes to get out of your marriage. I'm like, I can't. There is no loophole in here. You didn't go to God for this marriage. You just jumped in there. And now y'all married. Y'all in. You're stuck now. I'm not saying you got to stay in the same house. But as far as the book is concerned, that is your wife or husband until death. I'm sorry. There's not, no way out of it. There's no way out of it. I done upset some of y'all in your fourth marriages. I'm sorry, y'all. My bad. <laughs> But you can't find nothing in there. You be, well, God uh, God knows my heart. God will forgive my sins and blah, 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 blah. That, but where did he say that? Jesus talked about uh, marriage and remarriage and divorce. And so did Paul. And they both lined up with each other. There was no other way out. So what are you going to do? Go to Old Testament and look where Moses gave a rid of divorce? Well, Jesus addressed that. So he cleaned it all up. So this is what this, is what this man is doing. It holds no scriptural truth for born again believers. Per the writings of the Apostle Paul, before we began become before we become a Christian, we are slaves to sin, held in bondage to its cruel ty- tyranny. Okay, before we become of the body of Christ, we're slaves. However, when we become born again, we become slaves of God. Now obedient to a new master, and there is never a moment in anyone's life in which we should not be a slave to Him. Hence, the whole. I am crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live. That's the whole scenario. You understand? Furthermore, we have instructions which he should be teaching on regarding what to do when. You understand? Listen, we ended this conversation by saying, I'm afraid of John Gray. I've seen this before. This is a personality disorder at its best. This is a narcissistic behavior disorder, and his his clever, concise way of addressing the church is the sickest part of it, all because he gave us everything we wanted. We wanted this, except those with discernment. All would conform. He's not sorry he did it. He's sorry that he got caught again. Does he wrestle? Absolutely he does. But a person who was not a narcissist would handle this 100% differently. They would not continue to go before the people and try to grease and slime it in all ways with the, uh, the holy of holies. The way he stuffs God's holiness down our throats as an ammunition, thinking that it is his hiding place. 
and his government. That in itself. That in itself is most brilliant. He is a brilliant man, John Gray. And many of these men that that on my list here, Jamal Bryant is a brilliant man. You understand what I'm saying? These these brothers and these sisters that come and they have a word for you because they are charismatic, you love them, and it's difficult, quite difficult, to change the uh, the thought pattern of the people who you've won and you've groomed to this place. I talked about uh, three. What is it? Uh, different strokes. Uh, Willis, whatever his his name is, all right. How Willis was talking about he was on the Oz, Doctor Oz show, and how he was getting he was being molested by the 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 business manager of the family. <clears throat> uh, y'all tell me what his name is, Willis, okay? And he was talking about how the business man manager was grooming his parents. The business manager didn't just take Willis. On, on these little excursions and then start molesting them right away it took a long time because a rapist and molesters are very patient okay all right and they 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 whine and dine and they groom like 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 pimps todd bridges thank you sheila grover groover okay all right and and this man this this business manager was grooming him and telling him in his ears listen i'm gonna he, he says uh 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 after he did this act, um, he started doing these things to to um, Todd Bridges. He started doing these things to him, and Todd Bridges began to believe that this was normal. And then, after after a while, the actress on the show, Dana, is her name Dana Plato? I think it is. Okay, Dana Plato. Then she began to mess with Todd Bridges and that sexual act felt normal to Todd. Now this is from his own words. I heard he was talking on Dr. Oz that became normal. It felt normal. That is. And he was like, why does this feel normal? So my penis is used for this and not for what this business manager was doing to me. This feels normal. And then he went home. Okay. And then he said, while he was at home with his mother and father, um, he was there and the business manager came in the door, as he usually did. And the mother looked at Todd and Todd jumped back. And Todd says, it was then when my mother knew that this man had did something to me. He says, I didn't have to say nothing to my mother. She knew right away and she viciously went after the... the uh, the business manager. And he was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. And the father was defending the business manager. And Todd Bridges says, that dad, that's exactly what this man said you would say. That's exactly. He says the, the words that was coming out of my father's mouth was the same words that the business managers told me that my father would say. He says, I realized that not only was this man grooming me, he was grooming my father. Y'all, I'm trying to tell you, these preachers groom their congregations. They groom y'all and get you ready for any scandal that may jump out. They put an investment in the ground. I got a seed in the ground and they get you ready. So when they speak, they do Facebook lives and, and, and uh, YouTube and they do Instagrams or they all over their pulpits and they always come across as being, uh, strong and, and mighty and confident and irreplaceable and infallible and all these things that come across that way. And when you come across that way all that time, if you fall, you fall heavy and hard. But what happens is you've groomed the people. And Donald Trump says, I can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and not lose a voter. He groomed them. You understand? So when I come before you all, I'll tell y'all my, I show y'all my insides. Y'all know my blood type. Y'all know my scars. Y'all know the things that happen because I tell my story. 
the tra- I'm just it's a transparent show. I let y'all know. Hey, 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 hey. I'm jacked up. <laughs> Okay, this is what happened to me. Now I'm better now. I do tell you, but y'all, y'all follow me through my story. Understand? And so if if whatever happens to me, y'all say, listen, hey, he told, he said it, he said it. Contrite heart, broken spirit. Okay, and this is the way David came, and when he was talking to God, and as uh, is this, is the Psalms. Uh, what is it, y'all? Psalm 51, is it? I'll read this and go, okay? Uh, because what y'all see here is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat, okay? What y'all see here is um, something that we all should as- ascribe to. Now, is he going to blame somebody for what he did? This is the Psalm of David regarding the time Nathan the prophet came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Mm, mm, mm. Here's what he says. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the, the stain of my sins. Now, he, he slept with this woman. She got pregnant. Now, here's the problem. The reason why he slept with her, it was a couple of reasons that some, a couple of things he did bad. We don't look at the, the beginning of why he did it. Number one, the Bible says when the kings were supposed to go to war, David stayed his own nasty butt at home. That was his first mistake. Did y'all hear me? He was supposed to be at work and he stayed home and this woman was on the balcony taking a shower. Understand? And then he called for her. And then he had his way. He sent her away. She got pregnant. And then he had to fix it. Damage control. So how did he fix it? He thought he could fix it by doing making things much worse. A lot of times when we try to fix our mess, we make things worse. Bill Clinton kept bound, pounding on that table and he was making matters worse. And he was he was he was digging himself a hole right into um, uh, back into court. Okay, so what did he do? He brought he told the husband he had the husband to come there, and so they can drink and get so he can get him drunk, and he can go home and, and lay with his wife and put some sperm in her. So this way, when the baby come out, he at least he know that that he would think that this was conception. He conceived the baby. Didn't work. Because he found a, a righteous man who said, I can't go home. <laughs> I can't go home. And he says, I, could, I, gotta, I got to kill you. All right, he did all this stuff. And then Nathan came and says, hey, bro, listen. Uh, I got to tell you something, man. What? Mm. God says, listen, talk to David this way. Because if you tell him that he sinned, then the OJ is going to pop out. The character of the Bill Clinton is going to come out of David. The character of Eddie Long is going to come out of David. The spirit of Jim Baker is going to pop out of him. The spirit of Jamal Bryan is going to pop out. The spirit of Jerry Falwell is going to pop out of him. So God told Nathan, just tell him a story and let him bury himself with his own words. Mm. And so Nathan said, listen, I got a little story to tell you. Sit down, David. And he told him this wonderful story about this, this man, this powerful man of prestige and this little ooh, this ew, okay? And, it's, and, it, and when he got through with the story, David said, bring me that man. And he got so upset. He got so peed off. Bring me that man. Mm-hmm. And David said, who is he? <laughs> David said, you the man. What could he do? Bust it. Bust it. Classic def- defle- uh, deflection. Come on, Anton. Classic defle- defection. Deflection. <laughs> okay, there's a difference between the two. Bust it. Do y'all understand how, how God told Nathan to handle it? What's the message here? You don't always have to go to people and say, You are a sinner and you're going to hell. Because God knows. The response from this man. See, when I sinned, the lawyer, uh, when the, when the um, prosecutor came to me, not the prosecutor, who was it? It was a detective 
at the table was saying, listen, you did this. And I says, mm, no, no, I, I didn't do this. No, I didn't. No, I, no. They're they always telling on me. This was me. They're always telling on me. They are. No, they, they, they. And then she says, I got the receipts. I says, I did it. <laughs> Yeah, I did it. I, she said, you want me to show you the video? No, 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 I did it. I did that thing. And from that moment on, from that moment on, I kept saying guilty, guilty. My lawyer says, don't say guilty. I says, guilty. Somebody else was uh, saying, and some advocate was saying, no. And my other friend was saying, no, no, fight this. I said, guilty, guilty. I says, I can't do this before God. I can't do this. I did this. I did this. I said, because as long as I keep saying I didn't do it, I got to go through this this other thing and, and, and it, taking it to trial and all. Why I continue? Just, I says, I did this thing. I did this act. And it, that thing went on for months. And the lawyer looked in my eyes. Not the lawyer. The judge looked in my eyes. And the, law, the judge saw that I was telling the truth. And he could not put me away. He said, bam. Case dismissed. He says, I've never seen that. I told you a story before. The, the, the judge says, in all of my years of practicing law, <laughs> I've never seen a man so humble. This is what he said in my face. He says, get out of here and pay restitution. I don't want to see you no more. <laughs> and I walked out there with my chest out. Tell the truth. So when you go to somebody... Uh, some one of one of these brothers called me on the phone because he had he had left his wife. He called me on the phone. He said, "Brother, he says I want to I want to return back to my wife." I told this story before. Y'all heard it before. Some of you are new to the show. He says, "I want to return to my wife." I said, "You do?" He said, "Yeah, man. I want to go back. I miss her so much." He said, "What do you think I should do?" I says, "I don't think you should go back to your wife." He said, "What? What?" Come on, man. That don't make any sense, man. I told you. I said, no. He says, why? I says, because you are still a hoe. He said, you're right, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. I said, yeah, I know I'm right. You still a hoe. I mean, listen to the conversation we was having leading up to this question you can really ask me. You talking about you and this woman. You talking about you and this other woman. And, and then you ask me, should you go back to your wife? No, man. You are a hoe. I, I love your wife. That's my friend. And I wouldn't, and I, you're equally my friend. But I got to protect her. And I don't want you going home to your wife. You ain't ready. And she ain't ready for your nasty self. You still a hoe. And he says, you're right. Got to go, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to handle people. And God will give you wisdom when someone does something. You got to sit down with them and listen. You may have to tell them a story so that they could incriminate them their own selves. And then you push it back in their face. You said this. Adam thought he could do that to God. says, the woman you gave me tricked me. And God pushed it back in his face. He says, okay, well, since the wife I gave you did this to you, I'm going to punish you. <laughs> dang. I, dang. I can hear, I can hear, I can hear him saying, dang. <laughs> so here's what, here's what, uh, uh, David says, have mercy on me. Oh God, wash me. He says, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain in my sins. He didn't say somebody else's sin. He says, wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. That thing, when they were telling me to, to plead not guilty, I said, this thing will haunt me for the rest of my life. I'm not doing that. He says, against you and you alone have I sinned. I sinned against you and you alone. Now, this seems unfair to many people who, who read this and try to get an understanding. Like, Wait a minute. He sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against Uriah. He, he sinned against the woman that he was with. All right. I mean, he, why would you say he sinned against? He, because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you sinned against God and God alone because the relationship that 
that he had with God, that was a marriage. These other people, yes, there was sinning going on, but he sinned, the ultimate sin, what he's saying here. So a lot of times when you have to read mm, the mindset and the, the poetic parallel, Jewish parallelism of, of a lot of these writers, you got to get to the just of the matter. It may seem like they're wasting time, some of the words, and they lead you over here and there, but you got to understand the style and the culture and the custom of the writing. He sinned against God alone. You understand? He says, I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. God, whatever you say, you're right. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Now, what he's doing is telling the truth. I was born a sinner. I get it. But you desire. Now, notice what he's saying here. It looked like he was getting ready to bring up an excuse. He says, come on. I was born a sin. So I'm, I'm, I'm just li liable to sin because I was born this way. Homosexual says, I was, God, God made me this way. I was born a, a, a homosexual. So I do homosexual things. Even though God says, you must be born again. So he says here, first, he says, I was born a sinner. He says, from the moment my mother conceived me, but, <laughs> but you desire honesty from the womb, mm -hmm. teaching me wisdom even there. He says, you desire honesty, not right now, but from the time I was born. You desired it. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. He not playing juggling balls and all these things. He says, wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Mm, I'm broken. Unlike what the gray and the other ones were saying, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress. You know, it may happen. It may, ha you know, y'all keep working with me. But no, he says, you broke me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Not work with me here. Yeah. Keep working. No, creating me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Don't be on. God ain't through with me yet. Shut up. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Mm, he's leaning on God. You see what I'm saying? That's why he says, I sinned against you and you only. He's leaning on the one who, the only one who can do all these things for him. Bathsheba couldn't do this for him. Nathan couldn't do this for him. He says, then I will teach your ways to rebel rebels and they will return to you. Notice these men who fall and they sin. Notice the way they talk. They don't talk about holiness, sanctification salvation, hell, fire, brimstone. That is not in their conversation. They use poetry and they, they side, uh, tell side stories about, uh, compassion and love and prosperity and wealth. Okay. And my haters and all these motivational speeches. You understand? But they don't preach about hell and fire and brimstone and holiness and salvation. No, they don't do that. They can't do that. Notice what David said here, though. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. He says, then I will teach ways, your ways, to rebels and they will return to you. I will be preaching the gospel and the people will be saved. Under my teaching, forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I will offer one. Oh, man, I could break this down, y'all. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. So the sacrifice you do want is, is not deflection. He says, a broken spirit, you will not reject a broken and repented heart, O oh God. 
God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, y'all. Look with favor on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then bulls will against will bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. After I clean this mess up, then we can go back to doing what you told us to do. Burnt offerings or what have you. He says, but until then you don't require that. You want me to clean up my nasty self. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. This is what he's saying. He says, yeah, be not conformed, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And once you clean all this stuff up, then you can go back to forsaking out the assemblies of yourselves and your churches. And you can have your praise and worship team and your choir and your offerings. Well, you can do all that stuff. That's fine. He says, but until you clean this mess up, going back to your churches. Fruitless. There it is, Terry. Repentance. Listen, I gotta go. I went a little long. I haven't heard from the clock keeper. I don't know if she's on here or not. Uh, but uh, uh, I gotta stop this because midday connection, and I haven't had my lunch. Uh, must be a bad connection. Uh, Michael Thurston. Hey, man. Um, no, I think you're the only one that might be freezing. Um, I I'll look at that. I've been looking at my thing and I haven't frozen. You guys had y'all didn't freeze. Did you gonna freeze? I know the mic probably was going in and out. Y'all gotta excuse that. I gotta go. I love y'all. Clock keeper, she's here. She says an uh, hour and ten minutes. <laughs> yes. All right. Listen, if you're on if you're on YouTube, it's about a hundred of y'all right now. If you're on YouTube, take your anointed thumb, repentant thumb, okay, and mm, smash a like button. And turn it uh, Fisher Repentance, okay? Those of you who got the thumbs down on the left side of that thing, well, unfortunately, um, you too had a conversation with O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I see you, Michael Thurston. It's your computer, okay. Yeah, you too had a conversation with O.J. Simpson, and he convinced you. Thank you for blessing us, Midday Connection. Thank you, Pitts, for being here. You didn't have to. Yeah, you, you had to be here. You had to be here. Freedom of time was needed on this. Amen. That's why I went a little early. I didn't want to go at 8 o'clock uh, because uh, I needed my mind to be. I want. I needed all this to leave, leave me because I've been trying to do this show for days. And I got tired of waiting. I said, let me do this at 2 o'clock. Get this stuff out of me so that I can have a contrite heart. <laughs> all right. A broken spirit and eat lunch and not worry about nothing. I'm good. I'm clean now. I'm, I'm cleaned out. I cleaned house. Hit the notification button too for YouTube. Hey man, thank you, uh, hips. Hit the notification button. Hit that bell, y'all. Thank you for saying that. I'm. I be meaning to say that stuff, but I be forgetting. Hit the bell so you can get the notifications when uh, um, uh, somebody said they didn't get the notifications. Who was that? Denise. Somebody. Okay. Gotta go. I love y'all. Hey, this beautiful Caucasian woman is gonna tell y'all about my book. Go to Amazon.com if you if you bought the book already and leave a review, please, please. I need reviews, please, baby, please, baby, please. I'm bringing up the 1970s shows again. The 1970s show that I did on my birthday, I'm bringing it up again, but I'm going to show y'all where to go. All right, it's called Mixcloud. You need to get an account in Mixcloud. That's where the show is going to go because they won't take down no copyright stuff. I can play all of the jams and the hits over there, and they already paid the copyright fees and licenses. All right, so we're going over there to Mixcloud. I think it is .com. Go over there, set up an account, and then I'll be going live. We ain't got to worry about nobody messing up, messing with us live. But it's got to be live because once the show is finished live, they take it down. So you have you have to watch it live. Understand? All right. I, I, I got to go. I love y'all. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Shalom. Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. Well, good, goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.